I don't think that there's a single person in this room who can't tell me where they were on November 8th, 2016. Everybody has a story about how they found out that Trump became president. I, for one, cried like a baby in front of my boss, which was just a little bit awkward. Um, but when I tell people that I was an intern on the Clinton campaign, I often get to hear their stories. I get to hear about how they found out. And unfortunately, often those stories are about sadness and hopelessness and an overall feeling of despair. All of these stories have one common theme, though. People ask me, what to do next? What can we do next? People say that democracy is dead. But I am here to tell you today why I think that's not the case. To answer the question about what to do next, I want to first go back to why I got involved in politics in the first place. Um, I wanted to fix big problems. And I think that only politics can do that, because it touches all of our lives here and around the world. And I think that folks genuinely want to help each other. And I think the inability to do that is often what leads to our feelings of apathy and our feelings of hopelessness. But the thing is, when I see people dying in Syria and Yemen, I know that I can help solve that problem by putting people in power who will show compassion towards refugees and continue aid programs. And when I see the opioid epidemic ravaging communities, I know that I can help fix that by helping to create creative policy solutions to solve these problems. So in August of 2016, um, my family was living in Colorado, and I knew two things. The first was that I had to find a way to put my words into action. And the second one was, that I did not want Donald Trump to become my president. So I got involved. And it started with something really small. I just showed up to my local field office, and I said, hey, I want to volunteer. And it was pretty easy to get involved. And within two weeks, I had been asked to apply for an internship program, had applied, and gotten in. And um, I got to be part of this amazing office. And it was an amazing experience. And in that ex experience, I got to see both parts of politics. I got to see the apathy that so many hold. And I also got to, saw, to see the engagement and the change that we can all make when we work together. I think the apathy comes from two places. Um, sorry. Um, I think the first place that the apathy comes from is a feeling that nothing can change, and a feeling of continual neglect. So I'll never forget, I was canvassing outside of a Safeway, and this man who must have been in his 40s came up to me and asked me why I was so passionate about this, and why I was so involved, and did I actually think I could make a difference. He told me that he'd been working a minimum wage job his whole life, and nothing had ever changed for him, even though the people in power had. And at the time, I really didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to respond. Um, to me, it was so obvious that politics mattered and that it was something we should all be engaged in. But what I wish I could go back and tell him is that the minimum wage was actually on the ballot in Colorado that year. And the increase in the minimum wage that ended up getting passed changed, most likely changed his life. And by voting, he could have been a part of that. I also saw apathy at my school. I think I asked every single person who went to my high school if they would volunteer. Um, and there was this one girl who sat next to me in my language class. And every other day, I would, I would finally get her to volunteer. And on the days that I didn't get her to volunteer, she would cancel on me. Um, and I think the reason that this apathy exists is because there was a feeling that it wasn't our place to make change. Politics seemed elitist. It seemed inaccessible, and it didn't feel like it was a place for anyone. On the other hand, in contrast to all of this apathy, I got to work in this amazing office with people who are passionate about the same things I was, and who were working hard to put these things into action. 
I saw, in the office, I got to see a bunch of people working hard towards the ideals and solutions that we all wanted. And it made politics feel so accessible because I realized the way that we could all make change is by working hard with others, working hard with others and putting in the hard work. And that way we can move things in the right direction. The night of November 8th, 2016 was really tough for me. Um, I was in Aurora, Colorado, trying to keep people in line so that they could vote. And at around 10 or 11 p.m., the election got called. I really could not absorb what was happening. The only thing I could really think about was keeping people in line because I wanted so that they could vote because I wanted to, to make sure that other people were buying in to my vision and my belief that we could really make change if we just engaged. I couldn't sleep that night. I stayed at home from school the next day. And it felt like the world I had worked so hard for slipped away. I felt sad, I felt hopeless, and I felt angry. I had believed in the democratic system, and in that moment it seemed like it had failed me. All the hard work I had put in didn't seem to matter. I think the world looked at the U.S. that night and thought similar things. It seemed that democracy had failed the very place that touted it. The thing is, though, Everything I said at the beginning about how politics can create large-scale solutions to large-scale problems that might otherwise leave us sad and hopeless still stands. So in the cloud of all my sadness and, and hopelessness, hope did come through. And hope came through in the form of Norma. Norma had been a volunteer on the campaign, and when I say volunteer, I mean she dedicated her life to the campaign, and she wanted to do something. Um, so she invited a bunch of people that she knew into her home to talk about what we could do next. These were just a bunch of people from our community getting together and talking about how we as a community could make the change that we wanted to see. It wasn't about elites. It wasn't about money. It was about a bunch of normal people coming together and organizing. There were also new people in the room, which was really exciting. People who had never really been that engaged in politics were stepping up and getting involved and finding their voice. That night, we went on to found Col Colorado Votes, a grassroots organization focusing on voter contact, voter registration, and voter turnout. And as we did this, people all over the country were organizing as well. The day after the election, there were walkouts in high schools across the United States as, people try, as, as high schoolers tried to send a message of love and acceptance in contrast to some of the rhetoric that they were seeing. And, so, and, and in these high school walkouts, I saw people in my school who had never volunteered, never wanted to be engaged, finally stepping up and finding something to do in order to combat the things that they saw that they didn't like. There was, there was also the Women's March, which was the, one of the largest protests in United States history. This was people showing up and getting involved in civics. And more than that, there were also indivisible groups popping up all across the nation. The Indivisible Guide was created by a bunch of former congressional staffers, and pretty much what it does is it teaches the layperson how to lobby their member of Congress. And so these groups, using these guides, organize their communities to lobby their members of Congress. And they've been incredibly successful. A lot of the reason, uh, a huge, um, part of the reason that Obamacare wasn't repealed was due to the work of these groups. These groups organized their communities to make thousands and thousands and thousands of calls to their members of Congress to make sure that those who represented them knew that they wanted to keep Obamacare in place. And, and they were successful in it, right? 
Obamacare did not get, um, didn't get repealed. And there's, there's some things that I really want to highlight about this movement. The movement is about normal people. Politics can sometimes feel really elitist and really unwelcoming. And that might make people not want to get involved because it doesn't seem like it's something for them or it doesn't really feel like they could find a place in it. But that's not what this movement is about. And more than that, I don't think that, that's, that, all, um, that all these issues are necessarily the whole story. I'm not saying that there are no issues that we need to deal with. Low voter turn, money that corrupts politics, are all concerns that we should be caring about. But the thing is, I got to see firsthand how we can fix these problems and more by finding our voice and organizing in our communities. When we organize, we can push those who represent us to put in place po the policies that we want to see so that we can create change and solutions. As I was working on this talk, um, the tragic shooting in Parkland, Florida occurred. And all those feelings of sadness and hopelessness really came back for me. Um, living in the US, I had seen mass shootings occur, leading to the same rhetoric again and again, and no action being taken, and no changes being made. And I thought that's what was going to happen again. Nothing was going to change. And luckily, I was wrong. Uh, the students in Parkland have been unbelievably successful at raising their voices and making change and pressuring their members of Congress to make that change. And I know that this might seem really small for those of us who don't live in the US, but the fact that the conversation in the US is finally about guns and gun control and not about any other issues surrounding the gun debate is a huge step forward. And I think that's only the beginning. Students have raised their voices about this issue and they are not going away. And I'm incredibly excited to see the change that will take place. So, many people are concerned with low engagement from folks my age, our age, but what we need to do is show people who are disenchanted with the system that they can change the system. And we do that by changing the system ourselves. And we can do that by raising our voices and organizing our communities. And, and all of this is already happening. Whether you want to get involved with a single, with single with a single issue group, or get involved with partisan politics, or whatever else you are passionate about, there is a way to get involved and there is a way to make change. All that you have to do is raise your voice and take a first step in getting involved. What this movement has shown is that if you want to have hope in your democratic system, you have to go out there and create it. In living rooms and church basements, community organizing is, what you, is going to drive people forward. So we need to stop being afraid that democracy is dead or dying or whatever buzzword is being used today. We as communities across the globe need to recognize that we have the power in our communities to make change. If we organize, we can create systems that work for us and change the things that frighten us. Let us stop using our energy on being afraid and instead use that energy to go out there and do something about it. Thank you.